Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dreamer again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with Magic Lake Development. I'm gonna show you what you see behind the scenes, which is a scene that I created by using the Magic Leap template. I also use what's called the Magic Leap Toolkit, which I'm gonna be showing you how to download it and how to get it set up in this video. I'm also going to show you what version of URP I use and also Visual Effects Craft to be able to render the particles that you see behind the scenes. I'm really excited, there's a lot to do today, so let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have today, which is a demo of using hand tracking. I also wanted to show you what I did with the Oculus Quest so that you get an idea of what I did for Magic Leap. So I'm just gonna hit play. You can see that that is playing on the right side. Also, if I go to the left side, let me go ahead and rewind it. And I'm gonna lower the volume just a little bit. So you can see that Magic Leap actually provides a skeleton tracking. So they have key points on the hand. So if I go back here, these key points are all tracked by the, basically by the Magic Leap toolkit that they provide. Also the line renders that you can see going through here. Also these lines right here is basically keeping track of the axis on your hand. So all of that is out of the box by using the Magic Leap toolkit. So I'm just gonna hit play and you can watch the whole video. So I was gonna explain a little bit as this place. So I'm basically grabbing the spheres which are made out of particles. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm using the hand tracking functionality that they provide in the Magic Leap Toolkit. And then I'm also using what's called a direct manipulator. And I'm gonna show you how that works. But it basically allows you to scale, allows you to move it around. You can also rotate it if you like to. You can use two hands to, to scale it like I'm doing right now. So pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Each one of the particle systems right here basically has around 250,000 particles. And they're all rendering pretty, you know, pretty well. The, the FPS on it, it's, it's really good. I didn't really, you know, experience any low performance. It was working really well. And then on the right side, you know, we, we ended up playing, I only had 250,000 particles, which that was running on the Oculus Quest. So. I'm just playing around and, and basically having fun. So what do I do to do something like that? That's the question that I'm going to get from many of you. And I know that many of you try to get the visual effects graph to work in, you know, in Magic Leap and that didn't work. So I'm hoping that by showing you this video, and I'm also gonna be sharing this code anyway, so you guys can download it. So I'm gonna walk you through all the components that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna start with, you know, basically downloading the tool. So if you need to start working with Magic Leap, what do you need? So you're gonna start with downloading the lab. So if you haven't done that already, make sure you download it based on the version of your operating system. So in my case, I have a Mac, so I downloaded it for a Mac. If you have Windows, you can do Windows. Once you do that, you're gonna have this guy here, which is what I have. This is called the Labs, really cool tool. And you basically can download everything that you need to get going. So you can do Unity, you can do Unreal, you can do, well, some of these ones are gonna be required. So if you're working with Unity, you're gonna need Unity and you're gonna need the Loaming runtime. You also might need, if you need some additional tools, some of these other components. So if you wanna do native Magic Leap development, of course you can do that. If you wanna do Magic Script and then Magic Verse SDK, you know, you can do that. In my case, I only did the Unity and also the Loaming runtime and also some of these helpful tools because I didn't really know if I was gonna need some of these tools. So in my case, I downloaded it and then I went into my tools and basically once you download it, you're gonna have you know everything installed. In my case, I have Looming SDK, so some of the NVIDIA components, Power Profiler, which is really cool. You can see some profile, some of the information and the performance on your device. Also, this one is really important because you need this in order to communicate with Magic Leap. So make sure you download the Magic Leap Unity package. So in my case, I downloaded that as well. And once you get all of that downloaded, then you're ready to go and you have Unity. So you're gonna open up, you know, the Unity Hub. And I know that this is, you know, something that you guys already went through if you're, you know, if you've done this already. But if you haven't done it, this is really helpful information. You're gonna have Unity. It's go you're gonna basically start with the Unity Hub. And then once you get the Unity Hub, you're gonna have to download the Unity template. So it's really not required, but I really recommend that you do that because it'll get you going with all the different things that you need. So let's go ahead and go into the getting started documentation in Magic Leap. So you're gonna go into Unity and then Unity Setup. I downloaded the latest version of the Unity project template. And this is the one that I'm using 0.24.0. .0. 
And then that one says, you know, it works with Lumen SDK 0.24, which is what we're using. I'm also using the latest version of Unity, which is 2019.3.5 F1. So it depends on, on your case, depending on what you have. If you have that one, then that works. I just downloaded the latest one and, and that worked for me. So download the template, download all the tools that you need from the, you know, from the lab. And then once you get all that going, then you're gonna have, you know, Unity running with the template going. So the template is going to have, it's not gonna have what you see on the screen, of course, because this is something that I that I added afterwards. But what you're gonna have is you're gonna have this folder and then you're gonna have a very simple scene, which is gonna be called the Hello Cube. And the Hello Cube is just, you know, getting it started, it's just gonna give you a cube and you can build it to your device. And then once you, you know, render it and build it to your device, you're gonna see a red cube. So beyond that, this is gonna be the Hello World. Then after that, if you want to get more advanced tools, such as the Magic Leap tools, which are really, really cool and I really enjoy using them. And I'm gonna show you where you download that from. But the, the Magic Leap Toolkit is a toolkit that is going to allow you to basically use components that Magic Leap already provides to you. So in my case, I didn't really want to build everything from scratch, like the hand tracking, which is a little complicated. So I didn't want to build that from scratch. So what I'm doing is I just downloaded the toolkit. And let me show you where you will download that from. You can either go into here, the documentation will have it, and they'll basically tell you, you know, the Unity MLTK setup, which is the Magic Leap Tools toolkit setup and what you need to do and so on. Basically, you're gonna be landing in here and this is a GitHub repo. You can download it, you can clone it, and it's gonna have all the different tools that I'm gonna be walking you through. I'm not gonna walk you through all of them. I'm gonna show you the, the hand tracking input example. So if we go back here and you look at the Magic Leap tools, once you import it, it's gonna give you another folder. So Magic Leap, this is gonna be the core one on the template. And then the Magic Leap tool is gonna be the additional tools that you can start using to basically create your experiences in augmented reality. So in my case, I wanted to look at how the, you know, the hand works and, and basically get going with that information. So you can see that they have different examples. So if we go into the examples folder, let me see if I can find it here. And there we go, and then just collapse that. So if you go into the examples folder, you can look at, they actually have a really, you know, well organized. So if you wanna look at control input, if you want to use how the control pointer works, you know, basically keeping something in front of the camera all the time, and then, you know, different examples in there. I was really interested in hand input because I've been doing a lot of basically prototyping with that, so I just focus on this one. And if you have looked at my Twitter account, you're probably gonna see that I was playing with this scene because I just posted a video about it. But in this scene, you have, you know, different components that are all, all basically reacting to physics. So if you wanna punch this bag right here, if you wanna feel like a boxer, you can do that. If you wanna grab that cube and you wanna stretch it and basically rotate it, you can do that. They also have, let me go ahead and hide the gizmos. They also have different buttons that you can interact and all of these components are going to interact with hand tracking. So you can push that button, you can push this one as well, you can do this one as well. And then also the slider works really cool and also you can, you can grab this hammer. So let me show you, I think I have a video here on Twitter that I can show you how that works. And if you know me by now, you know that I post everything in Twitter. So here's an example. I basically added a gun. I can move the gun around. I can also let it go. I also wanted to grab a sword and see how that worked and actually works really well. This is another example of me actually showing the, the key, basically the key point visualizers, which are these points with line renders and also grabbing the slider and see how that works. Also punching the, punching the bag right there because I wanted to fail. You can also see that occlusion is working because the hand is, you know, you can kind of see some occlusion on the hand. You can also grab items, I can. So everything works really well. I was really impressed with the, you know, with the improvements on hand tracking and, and also being able to grab items and, you know, interact with items is huge. And also it was really easy to add new items to be able to interact with such, such as the sword and also the gun that you saw me grabbing. But I, I didn't really want to leave it in there. I wanted to do something cooler, which is I wanted to use particles because I'm, I'm really, you know, interested in, in using VFX, visual effects graph and also being able to move it. So that's what I did afterwards. So what do you need to do to get particles working? Also, what do you need to do to get the scene working? So I show you the scene comes from the Magic Leap tools. Just go ahead and download it. Once you get it downloaded, you can build it. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to now that you, you know where that comes from and what tools you need, 
then how did I get the particles to render? And that's basically this scene right here. So you can see that in this scene, I have these lamps in here that designate. So that's going to be, that is the icon, the gizmo that basically Unity provides you that, to designate that that's basically a visual effects graph. And in my case, I wanted to do three different particles. And the particles I grabbed from another repo that I uploaded to GitHub. So I'm going to be putting that in the, basically in the description of this video. So don't really get to hang up on that. Just know that there's particles and those particles are going to render. So what do you need to do to do that, right? So the first thing that I need to do is, of course, I need to go to build settings, go into player settings. And before we can run and, and build to the device, we need to make sure that we have a certificate. So I'm not going to be walking you through the certificate creation because I think that's related to another video. Just know that I have a video that shows you how to generate a Magic Leap certificate. So you're going to need that to be able to push to the device. Once you do that, you need to download something called URP, which is the Universal Rendering Pipeline. And that's what I have in here. So I'm going to show you going into Package Manager. And I know that I'm showing you a lot of stuff in here. Just go ahead and pause the video and you know and watch it again if you need to know exactly what I did. But you need to download this version. And it's really important that you download this version. Otherwise, it's not going to work. The version of Visual Effects Craft you're going to download is going to be 7.31. And then you're also going to be downloading Universal Rendering Pipeline, which is going to match the same version. So you're going to have Universal RP731 and also the Visual Effects Graph 731. Once you have that, you need to do the next thing that I'm going to show you. Let me go ahead and close out of this. So you're going to basically, you can create a folder or you can just download it and basically create a Visual Effects uh, Pipeline anywhere that you, that you want. In my case, I think I put it in the assets. So I just right click in here go into create and then go into visual effects and these are going to be the visual effects that you can create to generate what i what i was showing you in the video but to generate the pipeline you actually need to go into rendering and then after you go into rendering you're going to go into universal rendering pipeline and you're going to be creating a pipeline asset so once you click that it's going to create something like this let me go ahead and go and make this smaller so what that's going to create is going to create these two different assets it's going to create a universal rendering pipeline asset and also the renderer. So once you have those two, you can go into build settings and then go into player settings. We're going to close out of this, go into graphics, and then you're going to click on this circle right here. And you're going to be basically selecting universal rendering pipeline asset, which is going to give you, you know, access to the, the URP rendering pipeline, which is different to the one that the template has. The template comes with standard rendering pipeline. So once you do this, you, you're going to see a lot of different, it's not going to render things really well. The reason for that is because you're going to have to upgrade some of the materials. So to upgrade the materials, just go into edit, render pipeline, universal rendering pipeline. And you can either create, upgrade the selected materials by selecting the materials through the project, or you can just upgrade all the project materials, which, which is what I did in my case. And then it upgraded everything that I needed. Once you do that, you're basically just ready to go. It's going to start using that new pipeline. And any object that you create in the scene, so if I go in here and try to create a, a new cube, and if we go ahead and resize it, it's going to use a universal rendering pipeline materials. In this case, it's using the lid. So just know that those are going to be different materials than the ones that you're used to using from the standard, you know, standard rendering pipeline. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So why is it important to, do, to use that pipeline? It's important because it's going to work with Shader Graph. It's also going to be working with the, you know, the visual effects graph, which is what I show you on the beginning of the video. The other thing that you need to do is just basically build it. Once you build it, everything is going to work. And the when I say everything is going to work, the particles are going to work. And then in this case, I also have a couple of particles that I that I added. So I have this one right here, which is called the, if I go, let me go ahead and make it smaller and make this one smaller. So this one has a default visual visual effects. If I go ahead and double click it, it's going to go open visual effects graph. Again, I'm not going to go through this graph because this, this is not really the intent of this video. Just make sure you watch my videos on visual effects graph if you want to know how they work. But just know that this is going to work. It's going to look great. And the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to basically interact with these particles. I wanted to basically move them around. So I added a sphere collider, and I also added a direct manipulation. And this direct manipulation, it's what they provide. And when I say they, this is Magic Leap, to be able to interact with objects with hand tracking. So it's going to be, it's going to have a direct manipulation component. It's going to tell you, okay, do you want to make it draggable? 
Do you want to make it rota rotatable? Do you want to be able to throw this object? Do you want to be able to scale this object? So you really don't need to implement anything. All you need to do is just basically toggle these options. And if I untoggle this, basically it's going to say, OK, now you can't really drag that object around. If I check it, you're going to be able to drag it. If I uncheck this one, you're not going to be able to rotate it, and so on. The other cool things that they have here is you also have an access to an idle color. If you want to just change the color, you know, as soon as you're grabbing an object, this is going to change it to green. You also have access to different sounds and then a lot of different properties in here and also different Unity events that you can hook, hook to. So that's really all I needed to do to be able to grab that particle, as you saw on the video. And as soon as I did that, I'm able to you know, move it around, rotate it, and so on. So that's basically everything that I needed to do in order to get that going. And you're going to get something like this, like you know what I show you on the video. And that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. The, the other components that you can also look at doing here is you can look at the visualizers. These are all, let me go ahead and pass this video. These are all part of the example, so I don't really need to cover them. Just know that if you want to you know, show the skeleton on the left hand, you're going to have to have these components. If you want to show it on the right hand, you're going to have to have these components. If you want to see the access visualizer, so, such as the one that I show you in the video, you're going to have to have this component. And then if you want to see the key points, you're going to have to have these game objects as well, and also access to the hand mesh information. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. Just know that I'm going to be putting this in GitHub tonight. So make sure that you check it out. Make sure that you check it out in Patreon, because it's going to be available there right away, and then in the next couple of days in GitHub. Thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned today, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code, such as the code that you saw in this video. And I'm also posting what I'm doing behind the scenes. Also, make sure to check out learnxr.io where I'm basically doing VR training and also going to be doing augmented reality training. Thank you very much, guys.